Welcome back, Chappelle. Welcome back to it. Welcome back to your flip classroom and our continuing discussion of what is now the effects of Napoleon on a worldwide scale, right? We are now discussing the effects of Napoleon and the French Revolution as it spread to the other areas, right? As this ripple that was dropped when a rock hit a still pond is going to spread all the way over to North and South America, right? Now, we could spend nearly a whole unit talking about the liberation movements of North and South America, right? We could talk all day long about these different items and these different things like Simone Bolivar in northern or like um, South America. We can talk about Jose de San Martin in southern South America. We can talk about the Mexican independence movement that lasted for over 100 years, right? Or what we're going to choose to do, though, is we're going to give one other example a chance, and we're going to talk about the revolution that occurred in Haiti, right? Now, you could call it a revolution or you could call it a liberation movement. Right? But the Haitians, all right, what are now the modern-day Haitians at that time, the residents of Saint-Domingue, which was mostly a slave society, are going to liberate themselves from French control, right? And they're going to actually create a society that is free from slavery, free from bondage, a little bit of a spoiler alert there. And they're going to do it all under the guise of this guy named Toussaint L'Ouverture, and who we're going to talk about a lot in this flip, and then also his general, Jean-Jacques Dessalines. Now, like, we will discuss those guys, though, as we go forward, but really quick shout-out, right, just to go out there. Um, C period and B period crushed it the last couple of classes. Now I've recorded this before E period and y'all always crush it so I'm sure you're going to do great. But the big thing about it is y'all did a great job. Some particular shout outs to kids like you know, like Victoria Pelletier did a great job yesterday. A couple other kids in B period that did a really good job were like the Dubrocks of the world and like all those kind of kids. And then Darcy Garvey killing it today in C period along with Gretchen Bassel. So keep it up, all right? Keep everything going. You're doing great. Don't stop. Now, the thing about it, though, that you need to understand, when we're talking about those big numbers, 550,000 people and 500,000 of them being slaves. So, of course, there's going to be a massive history of slave upheaval and revolt, right? So, even before the French Revolution, slaves were running away from their masters at high rates and dying in revolts as well. Actually, like, showing up and staging violent revolts against the white people that owned the actual land or that worked in the actual area. Why is this? Because the slaves were worked practically to death every single day, right? If a slave tried to run away, they could sometimes be maimed or mutilated. And a common punishment on this island if a slave tried to run away is they would be blinded in one of their eyes, right? That is insane, right? Like So like that is ridiculous that you would treat another human being in this way. So of course, this is going to inspire revolts. Why the French that owned these colonies thought it wouldn't is nuts to me, right? So the thing about it, though, is that slaves began running away at very high rates. They actually established very commonly these things known as maroons, which were small runaway communities, right? Little communities spread out all over the island and speckled into the mountains where they would actually create little slave cities and stuff like that, okay? So another big thing about it, though, is, is you got to understand there's a secondary group of people on this island, okay? They're known as the Afranchi, right? The Afranchi are free people of color and people of mixed race, okay? The thing about it, though, is that they tried to take control of these slave revolts to gain themselves some more rights. And they actually did end up gaining some more rights to try and suppress some of these slave revolts as well. And what that's going to do is they're going to earn some rights to vote, and they're also going to earn their own right to own slave as well. slaves as well. But the problem was is that this didn't actually fix anything, and it actually made more problems because it set up a social class system like this in Haiti, and it's a very fragile one at that, right? And so the big thing about it is, is there were the free people of color, also known as the Afranchi, spelled A-F-F-R-A-N-C-H-I-E, okay, Afranchi. So like literally, there were only about 20,000 of them, right? And most of the free people of color were either freed slaves that had actually gone off to like get educated enough to understand how to actually buy certain amounts of land, run plantations of their own, and also own slaves themselves, which is an absolutely wild setup. Or people that were manumitted by their masters and or people of mixed race, right? Because remember, we talked about this a lot when we were talking about colonization, that most of the Spanish colonists were single men, right? And there weren't very many European women there. So there was a heavy amount of mixed race people as well at the time called mulattoes, but I don't like to say that word. All right, so now look. So the other group of people, though, on the other side of this, as you can tell, these are African descendant people on the left. These are white descendant Europeans on the right. And the other people on this side are the Grand Blancs, right? The Grand Blancs, there's about 10,000 of them, right? But here's the screwed up part. They're the ones that own all the land in saint or saint or excuse me, saint Dumont. They are the ones who own all the land in that colony, but most of them don't even live there, right? Most of them live back in France, right? They own all the land and they sign off on the violent tactics used by the Petit Blancs. The Petit Blancs were mostly white laborers, right? Artisans, craft workers, overseers on the plantation, and there's about 30,000 of them. 
But look at this number right here. But slaves made up 90% of the population. 500,000 people total, right? And the thing about it was is that these early slave revolts, when they weren't perfectly solved and when they actually had a history of violence going on in them, they didn't really solve anything by allowing the free people of color to vote and or to own more slaves, right? So what ends up happening is the French Revolution then explodes in 1789, right? Now, this is where everything starts going down because what we're trying to talk about is how did the French Revolution and the rise of Napoleon create calamity in their colonies and lead to major changes in the growth of Latin American countries, right? The self-determined Latin American countries. Haiti would not exist possibly the way it exists now if the French Revolution didn't happen, causing so much hysteria, right? Now, in the French Revolution, or excuse me, the French Revolution explodes in 1789. And what's going to happen is a large number of slaves revolt. Again, actually inspired by several different voodoo ceremonies that actually happened on the island itself. And there was actually a voodoo high priest that predicted the growth of this and a hurricane actually swept in, causing massive confusion on the island and a huge slave revolt broke out, right? The thing about it was is that this particular slave revolt was aggressively successful, right? It was extremely successful, and it literally ended up taking over the entire northern province of the island, right? But a big reason why it was so successful is because a man stepped up to lead these people, who was an Afranchi himself at the time, but was a former slave also. Born into slavery with a different name and things like that, and grew to actually own a plantation of his own, and also ended up becoming very educated as a young man and stuff like that, and earned his freedom later on in his life. He led this slave revolt, and he is going to be the reason why slavery gets abolished on this island. And his name was, say it with me real quick, he is awesome, he is the man, look at him right there, he is sometimes historically known as the Black Napoleon, right? Because he was that successful in his military campaigns. But his name was Toussaint L'Ouverture, right? Toussaint L'Ouverture. Now, originally his name was actually Toussaint Breda, right? So yeah, because that is actually the plantation that he was born on to African parents, right? So the thing about it though is Toussaint L'Ouverture is a former slave and a self-educated man. Now, not completely what we do believe happened to him, because here's the hard part, y'all. He was born a slave, so we don't know much about his early life. We actually see most of his life really get kicked off when he turned about 50 years old. And as we know already from studying some of those other historical figures, typically your biography tends to wind down in your 50s. Like, you know, Caesar got stabbed when he was about like, oh, give or take 144. What was that number? Uh, so yeah, 144. Uh, so yeah, like Caesar got stabbed like in the 60s, right? Like, so yeah, and then also looking at it as well, like Napoleon had taken over all of Europe by the time he was 50, right? But Toussaint L'Overture is like, well, of course, really, really quickly, he changed his name to L'Overture because it means the opener of doors, right? Literally, his story gets started in his 50s because he actually at this point had been educated himself and he actually had earned some medical training and actually started working in one of these slave revolts as a field doctor, right? And he, the thing about it was is he was untrained in the military and in political matters, but he used his educated mind and the fact that he knew how to read and write to study the military campaigns of other famous generals, just like Napoleon did, and became a skilled general and diplomat, right? And he took leadership of the slave revolt that broke out in 1791 as it continued to roll forward after the man that started the voodoo ceremony had died, right? And the thing about it is, is he organized them together. He taught them certain skills. He made it so they weren't a group of like militia men. He turned them into a well-trained army, right? And he led 100,000 men in the slave revolt that began to really wash its way all over the entirety of the colony of San Dumont. And he was so successful, in fact, that literally the other powers in the Caribbean, the Spanish government was literally like, hey, Toussaint, how about you stop being loyal to France and you become an officer in our military? And the deal will be, we will abolish slavery in your colony, but we will get the land as a part of our country, right? And Toussaint considered this very, very heavily. And to stop this from happening, the National Assembly, with Robespierre involved, comes in and says, Toussaint, do not leave France. Stay with us. We need to make money off the sugar and the coffee grown in this colony because we are in the middle of a revolution. So please leave the Spanish army, rejoin us, and we will outlaw slavery. And so Toussaint said, we, oui, we. Oui. And literally, he got like slavery abolished 
in this colony, right? They're still a part of France at this point, but the thing was is he gets the slavery abolished completely and actually becomes a working part of the French government, right? Toussaint L'Overture led this revolt and literally accomplished so much in such a short span of his life, right? And as you can see right here in his triumphant victory portrait, he literally actually became the leader of the colony itself, regulated the production of food and goods, made it so they were actually focusing on feeding everyone and making sure also that the colony would run smoothly. But then, of course, we've got this turd who shows up. Now, everything changes when Napoleon comes onto the scene. Because in January of 1802, this is literally almost 10 years into like Saint Dumont being a slavery-free society, the French troops are going to land, like French troops are going to land in Saint Dumont. Now, I don't know if y'all remember this or not, but I told you earlier, I don't like Napoleon for two key reasons. One, he was extremely sexist and rude to women and took their rights away. And two, he tried to bring slavery back in one of his colonies. This is that colony. All right, so like this is the colony that he tried to bring slavery back into because he was like, we'll make more money if we go back to using slavery. But this person, Toussaint L'Overture, is standing in our way. That is absolutely disgusting, and it's why if Napoleon is, I meet him in the afterlife, I'm punching him in the face. All right, so like, no, look. So the French people, what's going to end up happening is like he's going to actually accuse Toussaint of setting up another uprising, right? And he sets up a meeting, and that meeting was actually a trap, right? He didn't even go himself, right? He didn't even go himself. He set a trap for Toussaint L'Overture and literally had him arrested and then sent him to prison in the French Alps where Toussaint L'Overture would die about 10 months later after liberating his people. He died in April of 1803, right? The thing about it was, though, is there's a guy in the realm that I haven't talked about yet, right? There was a man, as we know, all great leaders have assistants in the wings that were there the whole time. And the name of Toussaint L'Overture's second in command was a man by the name of Jean-Jacques Dessalines, right? Jean-Jacques Dessalines, who is pictured right here, who had a very different story compared to Toussaint L'Overture. Jean-Jacques Dessalines was born a slave himself, but was never set free on his own right or manumitted, right? He lived on one of the most violent slave plantations that existed in San Dumont. He literally witnessed the death of women and children at the hands of white overseers. He, he himself was tortured on the, like, the plantation that he actually worked on. So the thing about it was, Napoleon, you've done gone and screwed up because now this man is in charge and he's mad, right? Like So like, yeah, Toussaint's general, Jean-Jacques Dessalines, comes into power and in January 1st, 1804, Jean-Jacques Dessalines declares Haiti to be a new independent country, and he uses guerrilla warfare, and he has a little aid as, like, on his side as well, yellow fever, which crushes the French army, right? Guerrilla warfare tactics and the fact that disease swept through the French army and killed so many of them gave Jean-Jacques Dessalines the military upper hand that he needed, right? Now, it becomes the very first black colony to ever free itself from European control and the second colony ever to revolutionize from Europe. It went the United States of America and then bang, Haiti was the next up, right? And he became the very first emperor of Haiti. Now, Jean-Jacques Dessalines was later assassinated, actually. He was actually stabbed to death in an assassination attempt later on in a revolt. And in 1820, Haiti became an independent republic with democratic elections, right? And most of this was done. Why did all of this happen? It's because it's a massive effect of the French Revolution, okay? So big thing, if you want to write this down just so you know the thematics of this whole thing, why this all went down and why this all happened is because the Napoleon and his campaigns and the French Revolution caused massive confusion in their colonies, giving these people the ability to actually rise up and make countries of their own, right? Same thing happened in South America as well. A man by the name of Simon Bolivar, who has a street in New Orleans named after him and a statue of himself in New Orleans, created the, country of, the countries of Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, and liberated themselves from the Spanish while Napoleon was invading Spain, right? Same thing happened as well, like Jose de San Martin in the southern area of South America liberated Argentina and Chile and actually liberated them away from like European control and created brand new countries without European influence and without European governance, right? So the thing about it is, is Napoleon and his campaigns caused that much confusion that Latin American countries came into the world and became countries of their own. But that right there is where we're going to end this flip. We'll talk more about it. And we'll go a little bit deeper in our warm-up tomorrow. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, Toussaint L'Overture, Jean-Jacques Dessalines, and all these other characters as well. And we'll get a little bit more intense with it, okay? But I'll see y'all soon. Y'all have a great rest of your evening. 
Tack, jag ser.